Yeah, so there's my three big cuties. Three. And then who the hell is that? Hey guys, I figured it was finally time for an update video because if you don't follow my Instagram, you probably don't know what's going on in my life right now because just a lot has happened and there's a lot of stuff going on, which is why I've kind of stepped back from YouTube and haven't been posting as much as I normally would. I've been super, super busy, so hopefully this will give us some time to catch up and for me to show you all the new things going on in my life. So right now we're going to visit Scarlet slash donut whatever you guys know her as um the pregnant mare that is carrying my little baby um she's located down the road from my house about five minutes at a farm where they have lots of experience foaling out horses and lots of experience with breeding so it's just that little chestnut straight ahead looking pretty round now oh, muddy that should have worn boots and hi, big mama, you friendly lady. Hi. So she's 316 days today. And like, she's not on full watch yet, really. Like, we're just keeping an eye on her because she started to bag up. And like, she's progressing, but it doesn't look like it's going to be like tomorrow type thing. But I'll keep you guys updated. The vet's coming to have a look at her tomorrow. She's chasing the babies away from me. Oh, good mama. You use that big brain of yours to keep your foal in place. Why, yes, she absolutely is having maternity photo shoot. This is number one. We might do another one if I don't like these photos. <laughs> She's been so good. This is the only four-year-old that I could probably do this with and actually have stand here loose so that I don't have to edit out the halter and stuff after the fact. She's an absolute doll. We've been doing this for several minutes. So for those of you who don't know, mares start to bag up in their teats about up to a month before they're actually full. So she started to get firm in her teats and they're starting to bag up and there's fluid that'll come out of them, but it's clear. So as she gets closer, it'll start to change color and get thicker. It's quite thin right now. And they start to relax behind, so you can see her vulva is starting to relax. And her tail will start to lose firmness when you lift it up. It'll f go all the way up without as much resistance. So there's still some resistance. They start to soften in the muscles back here, which you can see she's doing at the top of the tail head. Since she was so muscular when she was bred, she might not soften quite as much as what regular mares do because she has such a good top line still but as you can see like this is pretty soft so <laughs> that means she's getting ready but as you can see she still has a very good top line so it's firmer than what it would be if she was falling really soon but it is it's getting softer usually you can actually see an actual indent in their hind quarters before they fall she doesn't have that yet, but she also, again, might not get it because of her muscle tone. Her belly has also started to drop quite a bit. Um, she was carrying more along the sides, and now it's dropping downwards. Um, before they fall, most of them will get edema right under here. That just collects, and it makes like a little bubble. She doesn't have that yet. Um, but yeah, so we're just keeping a close eye on her. The vet's going to have a look at her tomorrow. And we're hoping to get a camera installed so that I can watch her from the house and not have to drive down here at all hours of the night to come check on her, only to have her not be ready to fall. So yeah, she's doing really well. She looks great. Everything has looked really good so far. Um, and the vet appointment is just precautionary to make sure she's not developing any issues like placentitis um, before falling. But she's bagged up even more than she was last time I was here, and I was here yesterday. Okay, so the barn that Donut is in is pretty unique because um, all of the walls are like half height, so she can talk to all the horses, which is really important for a horse like her because she has some stall anxiety. 
from when she was younger and had to heal an injury. I don't know if the people who were rehabbing her were inexperienced or what happened, but apparently she was left in a barn alone for like the entire duration of rehab, which was pretty lengthy. So now when she's in the stalls, she's kind of expecting to be left on her own and gets stressed if she can't easily see other horses. So I needed to find her a place like this. And anyways, this is the foaling stall that she'll be in. There's no straw yet because again, like I said, she's not close enough where we've started to bed with straw. But we're going to start bedding with straw soon, just in case. And the reason why we don't use bedding pellets or shavings like this is because they stick to the foal and they come out and then the foal can also inhale them. Straw won't do that. So, yeah, this is where she'll be. She has her hay. She's eating as much as she can and really good quality hay. And she can see all her buddies. So it's really important for her because um, she would have been quite stressed if she had to be isolated for her labor and whenever she's in they're gonna keep a friend in with her um, and kind of rotate so that she's nice and happy so yeah this is the foaling stall they are double wide stalls for foaling generally because the horses need more room to lay down and push a baby out so regular size stalls don't cut so now I'll go show you what I've got for our full kit so far and for anyone who has lots of experience breeding I don't really need your suggestions because the reason why I brought her here is because the people here are a lot more experienced with foaling horses out than I am. So she gave me a list of what I need to buy for foaling and anything I don't have, they have. So we're good. Anyhow. Okay, so I'm missing a couple things still, but we'll go through it. This is the foal halter that I bought in Kentucky. Isn't it adorable? I also have another one that is a little bit smaller that we might need to use. Um, a lead. And then lots of paper towel. Um, obviously for cleaning up pregnancy grossness when the foal comes up. These are big, really sharp scissors in case we have a red bag delivery, which we do not want. That's kind of why we're getting the vet out tomorrow to make sure because that's very dangerous and it would put the hole at risk. Um, some enemas. These are stuff that you shoot into the rectum and it softens poo and makes it squirt out because foals are born with like really hard dark poos and this just makes it easier because it'll just all come out as a liquid then. So I got two of those. We're gonna dilute this a little bit more, but this is chlorhexidine, and we're gonna use it for just sanitation and cleaning her teats. It's easier on the skin than other stuff. Um, baby wipes, once again, for like wiping down her teats. Um, this is for the foal's nose to get any grossness out once it comes out. It's just like a baby syringe. I went to the baby aisle. Um, a bottle in case it won't latch. Um, a six month nipple for the bottle because foals aren't as teeny tiny as babies. Um, and then that's it for that bag. And then my dollar store bag has hand sanitizer for humans. And then I am missing a couple of things in here that I still need to get. So what I still need to get is an alligator clamp, which is for the umbilical cord. If it won't stop bleeding after we cut it, it just clamps it and cuts off the circulation there so that blood can't keep coming out. And then I also need long gloves that go up to my elbows, obviously for baby pulling. Um, and I also need some clean towels. I have to bring, I have to wash Phoebe's dog lick blanket and bring that in case it's cold when the foal is born so that it has something to wear and then the towels are for drying it off. Um, and then the rest of the stuff we already have here. So I'm just gonna put her foal kit in here. And a really gross fun fact is that that bucket is also part of the foal kit more than just containing it. That's where her placenta is gonna go because um, the vets need to check it after foaling to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. So this place that she is at right now is gonna be really great because they have, I think, four other mares that are due for foaling um, in the next month or two. 
so when she does fall her baby is going to have lots of friends which is super important for development um the other thing i really like is how hilly it is here because it's going to be really good for developing some good muscle and some good bone for both her and the baby which is important because we want them looking as good as possible when they go to inspection and then obviously it's really good that she can be out in a herd setting like this because of her anxiety when she's left alone especially in a barn she wouldn't do as well in an in and out paddock or anything like that and also just personally i think horses need as much turnout as possible so this is basically like a horse's dream and that coupled with the experience of the people that operate this place makes me feel really good. Since I am a first timer for actually like foaling horses out and stuff, I really wanted people that knew what they were doing because it's quite a hefty investment just to screw it up because you're ignorant and naive to what actually needs to be done. So I wanted to make sure that I had lots of help for it because um, it would just be way too stressful to do on my own. I've been around lots of breeding farms, I've been around lots of babies, I'm comfortable handling them when they're born, I'm comfortable looking for signs of stuff that doesn't look quite right once they're out, but I've never fold a mare out, so it wouldn't be good to wing it. <laughs> um, this is not something that you want to wing. So anyways, <laughs> I'm glad that I decided to bring her here instead of my house because while there's lots of people around at that barn, there isn't quite as many people there <laughs> that have like foaling experience as in pulling out numerous foals every year for decades. And that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted someone who's seen everything so that if we have something unexpected happen, they're ready to deal with it. The lovely sweet lady again, just here to say goodbye and do one final check. Um, so, yeah, good mama. Like, I can't believe how good her top line is. That is ridiculous. You're pregnant. You shouldn't look this good. But, yeah. Tail. And then boobies. Those are some good looking boobies. You're doing such a good job. She's the sweetest thing. I really hope that she throws a lot of her personality into that baby. Keep cooking the baby. The other great thing about this barn is that when the weather is good for the horses to be out, they're only in their stalls for like five hours a day, which limits how stressed horses get inside and also makes sure that they're walking all the time. So it's really good for their circulation and just their overall health. And for her, especially with how upset she can get in stalls, she's not nervous here because of the setup, but I was worried about that stress putting her into an early labor or something so it's just been a weight off my shoulders because we're at the point now where it's safe for her to have it any day now um so that feels really good we don't have to worry about anything happening too early now it won't be premature it's nice and cool now when it was hot we had like unseasonably warm temperatures last week and she was struggling quite a bit being so pregnant in the heat and I think that kind of was what made her start to bag up and kind of hurry along to get it out because it sucks to be heavily pregnant in the heat, I'm guessing. Um, never been pregnant and don't really want to by the looks of it, to be quite honest. Um, anyway, so the cool weather is good because she's more comfortable and she might hold on to it for a little longer. Um, when it gets hot again, she might go into labor if it warms up again we'll see um right now like i definitely don't think it'll be this week maybe closer to the end of next week we'll see what the vet says tomorrow because sometimes things progress really quickly and then you can be like oh i don't think they're gonna fool for two weeks and then all of a sudden they'll be bagging up and dripping colostrum and the baby's out within 24 hours so um we'll see so the next big announcement that you guys have been missing out on if I have to turn off the lights, um, if you haven't been following my Instagram, is actually in my field at home. So now I have to drive home to show you that. And for some of you, this might be a lot more exciting because it's not a waiting game. So I'll show you. Are you the goodest? Are you the goodest girl? So this is going to be a brief intro because I am done with the horses for today. 
I've been working all day and I'm gonna go and edit this video and the photos that I took after this. Yeah, so there's my three big cuties. Three. And then who the hell is that? This lovely man, hi, is a thoroughbred off the track. He came here unexpectedly. Like I wasn't like I was looking for a horse. Um, because he was getting too many ulcers at the track and even when they treated him when he went back there they just came back um, so the lifestyle there just wasn't for him so now he's gonna look for a job that he enjoys his trainer and owner at the track gave him to me to train and find a new job for and just see what he likes his racing name is Cherokee war chant which is like kind of racist because I'm guessing it wasn't from a native person. Anyways, we call him Chico. Um, Milo's following me, so he's running away from me right now because Milo's the herd boss and he's mean to them. So yeah, he's a six-year-old gelding. He's almost the same height as George, so I'd say about 16, 3, 17 hands. Um, but he's got a lot less substance than George and is just a daintier build. And this is his only marking right there, that tiny little star. He's super sweet. When he arrived here, he was pretty nervous and he was spooking at like every little noise. And he's quieted down a ton. Um, and he's just been lovely. My mom's, George, be nice. My mom's been riding him a lot and he's finally been accepted into the herd. And he's really happy and Simon's trying to pickpocket me, my backpack. Um, he's settled in. He's really happy. He's eating now. We had problems getting him to eat because he didn't like the texture of his food. So now he has his own special food and I figured out what he likes. And he's happy now and he's enjoying being in turnout with the boys. And he's just lovely. I think he's going to make someone a really great horse. Um, so obviously, given the fact that I wasn't even intending to get another horse, I'm not keeping him. He's a project. I'm going to find him a nice, lovely home where he'll be happy. Um, eventually so we'll see may it be sooner than later we'll see like I don't know when I'm gonna sell them it could be quite quick it just has to be the right situation you guys are such turds um, he is just such a sweet sensitive young man and so polite because yeah he's just such a sweet guy oh my god as George bites him <laughs> it's okay buddy they like playing together and they kind of look like fighting giraffes when they're playing together it's pretty funny um, yeah so anyways, he's a very sweet young man and he's so sensitive and he's lovely to handle and he's super polite because the day I went to get him, I was going to try to pick up, oh my God, stop it. Why? Why are you doing that? You nuts? Um, the day I got him, I was also going to pick up a client's horse and the horse wasn't happy loading and got loose and was running around and I had Chico out of the trailer because we were trying to put her in the end stall and he was obviously nervous because honestly any of my horses if that happened they would be freaking out even the quiet ones so he was so good he just like danced on the spot and was so polite wasn't bossy at all and I was very impressed just from that because especially a horse that's coming out of a racehorse lifestyle for a loose horse to be running around making noise where they cannot see them it's pretty scary and let alone like for any horse honestly but he was just such a gentleman and so polite and he is lovely to handle and really respectful of people and he's just a sweetheart so I'm really happy with him because I think he's gonna be lovely to work with and it's nice for my mom to get some experience with off the track thoroughbred straight off the track basically he's had he had some letdown time before I got him so he's good to go work wise um but he hadn't had any retraining off the track so it's been nice for my mom to get on something that's track broke and see what it's like and he's been very good to her so um that's really exciting and he's fitting in well to the herd now he's eating well now he actually didn't lose any weight which I'm really happy about he just doesn't really have the right amount of muscle like he looks like I'm sure people are gonna think he looks thin from a body scaling standpoint he's actually not thin per se it's probably about a four or something on the body scale but he doesn't have a ton of muscle right now and he's also just a leaner built horse so it's gonna take him a little bit to bulk up especially if he was having some gastric issues with ulcers and whatnot but um, how he's settled in, I'm really happy with because usually they do lose some weight coming off the track, especially if they struggle with ulcer issues and especially if they're picky eaters. 
So I was kind of expecting to have a big weight loss and have a skeleton because I was having such a hard time figuring out what he liked to eat um, the first couple days, but now he's eating and I'm really happy. So um, here's to finding him the bestest home and getting him going because he's a lovely boy. So yeah, that's my update guys. Thank you for following along and watching my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated with the full watch as it progresses, but as I'm busy, I'm going to try to get the videos up in, in a relevant period of time, but it's hard. So I'll try to keep you guys all updated so that you know what's going on. Um, definitely like this, subscribe to me, and share this video if you enjoyed it. Um, YouTube is awesome as a supplementary income to what I do, so if you share the videos, that means a lot to me. And your views also mean a lot to me. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much.